Hi everyone. Whenever BMW releases an LCI, life cycle impulse, you can easily see how well the car is doing by the amount of changes done to its design. In the case of the BMW 5 Series, as the pictures show, those changes were mostly subtle, limited, if you will. The biggest update happened in the headlight department, where the new model received a new pattern for the daytime running lights, DRL. These new lights are sharper and resemble other cars in the range. The blue highlights that we used to look for on the pre-facelift models fitted with laser lights are also a lot more noticeable, having been repositioned at the top of the cluster, dominating the front fascia, if you will. The kidney grille was also slightly updated. It is now a bit wider and taller but, thankfully, it didn't grow to ridiculous size like it happened on other models. It is also a bit sharper, with a 3D profile up front that does work well with the character lines infused into the headlamps thanks to the aforementioned blue accent of the laser lights. The luxury line package comes with triangular shaped air intakes on the sides of the front bumper, wrapped in chrome, as well as a side-to-side -side grille underneath that's meant to cool off the engine and its ancillaries. All in all, the changes are subtle but you do notice that the 5 Series facelift has a different face right now, especially when fitted with the luxury line package. New taillights have been designed, with a 3D shape once again, a shape that's very tricky to capture on camera. They are now lit by LEDs and look a bit beefier than before giving the rear end a bulkier look. All new models also come with trapezoidal exhaust. Inside the cabin, the same story applies. The design remains virtually unchanged but you do get some new color choices and new tech. And that's quintessential to the new 5 Series. In terms of interior space, things are as good as usual. There's ample room in the front and in the back, no complaints there. Since this is a touring model, a lot of emphasis was put on practicality. The dual opening tailgate is still here as standard, allowing you to store items in the back without having to open the entire tailgate. You can just pop the glass open, in which case, the boot cover retracts automatically, a nice touch to keep prying eyes away from whatever you have in the back. There are also all sorts of hooks available back there, for groceries, as well as slides and anchors for making sure nothing slips. There's even a retractable net located behind the rear headrests that can be pulled up to make sure the contents in the back don't roll into the cabin. And if you want to, you can fold the rear seats and get a cavernous 1,700 liter storage bin for your carrying needs. The best part about folding those seats is that you can store the covers under the floor, in a special cutout made for them, a nice touch that spares you the trouble of finding a place to put them. The seats up front were heated, ventilated and could massage you for days if you wanted them to. These are some of the most comfortable in the business right now and virtually the same you get on the 7 Series. As for the novelties inside, the iDrive system now has a larger screen and you can really tell there's a difference compared to the old setup. As for the iDrive screen, that's easy to modify, being simply attached to the dash in the first place. And now, on the top tier models, the screen measures a massive 12.3 diagonal. It's a noticeable increase, especially due to the wide margins on the sides of the screen which make it feel massive and old already. The biggest change here is the introduction of Android Auto for the first time. BMW also introduced its new Maps system which now uses cloud technology and more advanced features to make sure your experience is better than ever. It offers better route guidance, more accurate ETAs and a couple of new functions, such as finding a parking space. BMW also said the driving assistance functions have been upgraded, with lane departure warning now returning you to your lane in case you're not paying attention to the road, for example. The driving assistant professional option now includes active navigation with the help of the lane change assistant which means the car can switch lanes on its own while automatic formation of emergency lane and junction warning functions are also offered. Mind you, these features are only available in certain countries so don't get too excited about using them before you check their availability. And all that tech is superb and all but what about the engines and driving? Well, you'll be glad to know that they've all been upgraded as well. Unlike on other facelifts, the new 5 Series got a huge revamp for its engines. All 4-cylinder and 6-cylinder models have been upgraded and are now mild hybrids, using a 48-volt system. That's unusual for a facelift but, BMW had to do it in order to keep up with the tightening regulations about emissions. Therefore, all models except the V8-powered ones and the plug-in hybrids, now have a small 11-horsepower electric motor under the hood, tasked with various functions. This small motor works as a starter generator and basically takes over in certain driving situations. The car recuperates energy when decelerating, for example when approaching a light or when slowing down on the highway and stores it into an extra battery. 
The energy stored is then used by the electric motor for setting off or for an extra boost of power from time to time. And it works rather well. What you'll instantly notice is that the car will be coasting a lot of the time, sometimes with the internal combustion engine completely off. It's a weird feeling because whenever you're slowing down, you're expecting a certain rate of deceleration that might not actually be there, because the car is coasting instead. I'm not saying it was bad, it was just different and it takes a bit of getting used to it. As a matter of fact, this new approach can also be seen in the instrument cluster that has a different layout. Basically, you don't see a rev counter anymore, on the right side, just a power reserve meter. You only get a rev counter when you're in sport mode, otherwise, the right side of the instrument cluster is just showing the energy consumption of the car and how efficient you are. Setting off is also a bit different than usual, because the electric motor chips in. And the throttle response is very sharp because of it, making you leap ahead of everyone else when setting off, by accident. Once again, it's only a matter of getting used to it, not something I didn't like. This starter generator then has a couple other upgrades up its sleeve. For example, starting the engine is a lot smoother than before, and that makes a big difference. It also chips in when under hard acceleration and made the car feel like it had more than 190 horsepower. Some tech added here, a nip and tuck there, and what we get is a smooth, comfortable car that's also frugal and has a lot of potential for at least three years moving forward, until the next generation comes out. As it stands now, the facelifted 5 Series Touring is an excellent choice for families looking for a reliable and future-proof model for the next few years. Thanks for watching.